We are. We'll see if we're live. I'm going to check the audio mixer to see if I probably have to change some things. Because I did not do this before. Oh, no. Tsk, tsk. I know. Okay, someone say something. Blah. Bob. Well, it's working, but for some reason, the cameras got all jacked up. So now I have to fix them again, even though I fixed them before we did our stream. So, hello and welcome to Divine Heresy, a homebrew D&D 5th edition. We'll see if we're live. I'm going to check the audio mixer to see if I probably have to change some things. First instincts when you said hello were to wave. Like we were exactly what we did. So, uh, we are a bunch of normal ass people playing D and D, and they have entrusted me, I don't know why, as their DM to give a nice story and not kill them all. We'll see how that works out. What did you say? <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I came in expecting <laughs> death and suffering. Yep, That's what we've got. Yay! <laughs> so, my expectations fulfilled. <laughs> so let's introduce our cast of players. Starting with the person that you see first on your screen, Jay and Demand. Uh, hi there, everybody. I am Jay in Demand. I play Sizen, the um, no gnome blade singer, who is equally as strong as her tabaxi counterpart, Meowgi. Way stronger. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to have fun tonight. <laughs> oh, and um, can they find you on anything? I know that you're doing, if you're still doing your art and all that. Uh, not yet. Uh, I will have some stuff up and running soon. Fiverr, apparently, if you don't check in once a day, they're like, you're not serious about this. Uh -huh. oh, I will have to get back to you. Alrighty. Next, we have, without a webcam, is Ren. Hello, it's me. I play Gabri, the little fawn, who's just, he's having a real bad day. He's had several of them in succession for a real long time. But maybe today it'll get a little better. Probably not, though. <laughs> yeah, I can pretty much guarantee not. <laughs> so, but. Yeah. Uh-oh, what did we have? Oh, we just had a host. A gamer is a person. Host of the stream. Thank you very much, a gamer. Well, thank you. Um, and I love that hosting animation. I have a bunch of horde of zombies coming out. That's pretty fun. Uh, next, we have our local and um, our homebrew. Not really homebrew, but our wizard cat dragon. Hi, I'm Josh. I play Meowgi, the tabaxi wizard cat dragon, a uh, draconic lineage sorcerer, multiclassed and a wizard, and the most powerful member of the party, especially with the little extra spice he has now. So. Oh, we'll see exactly how spicy that that is. And last, but definitely not least, we have Damien the DM. And you're, oh, no, okay. you're not muted. My fault. Hello, everyone. Uh, I don't know as far as that whole normal label that was thrown at us earlier. <laughs> I am the antithesis of normal. I am queer, I'm gothic, and I look like a librarian. But I'm playing a very naive, innocent little dragonborn named Elkson, who is a ranger who often finds herself stuck in close combat, like right now. <laughs> Well, I always say normal is boring anyway, so there is no normal. We're all fucking weird. <laughs> so, and if you do enjoy D&D, make sure to check out Damien the DM's Twitch channel where you get to see me play sometimes as a crazy gnome, sometimes as a not-so-crazy gnome, and sometimes as an edgelord, uh, Death Knight. You know, well, I'm bringing out my inner edgelord with that. I'm not sure how long he's going to survive, so... He's already been suspicion of murder. Well, yeah, you know, and he just doesn't deal well with guards, and he's just telling him, well, obviously you're not doing your job right, <laughs> but hey. So, without further ado, let's get back into our game. When we last left our, off, our players were 
exploring the depths of a laboratory. This laboratory owned by a gnome arcane user by the name of Yosan Nigel. Yosan seems to have been very, very obsessed, is probably the lesser word, with dragon kai. And in this world of Jesredin, dragons haven't been seen in ages. There might be an elf who remembers seeing one, but of the other races, they don't. There's no one living that has seen one. However, they're still dragonborn. So, Elkson's family came from this country, the plutocracy of Goresh, where contracts and business is law. Uh, there are no nobles per se. It's all merchant families running everything. Yosan, having purchased the indentured servitude of Elkson's parents for unknown means. Well, it was unknown. It's not unknown now. Yosan has definitely created some very minor mutations. Our party has explored the depths of his laboratory, and in doing so, come across a ooze-like creature that seems to try to form the image of scales on its exterior but can't hold it. Seems to... Uh, form like a draconic head and sh shoot a breath weapon, but it's actually just himself. And during that battle with the ooze, these vats of glowing green liquid burst open and out came three creatures, two of which are definitely humanoid in shapes, but one arm is vastly mutated into dragon scales and wicked claws along with a leg uh, they seem to be drooling this unknown acidic liquid. One of them is further along in their mutation. And their entire body has been transformed into something that is... A devolved dragon would probably be the best description. Definitely not dragon, but dragon-like. We were in the middle of round of combat when we last left off, so how about we... Pick it back up. At the top of the round, it is the Dragonborn Abomination's turn. This individual with disgusting green and tan skin. Almost, you've seen green Dragonborn before. This is more sickly. With massive wings. He will step forward out of this large vat. Yeah, I do have to remember all of this. Let's see how you guys are positioned. He is going to move up here. And is going to... No, he's just going to take his multi-attack on Sazen. And your armor class, Sazen. Um, I have Bladesong and... Um, you are dual wielding, yes. And uh, what's the mage armor up? So I want to say 23. Alrighty. He will come in with two claw attacks. Mm -hmm. His first attack... First attack misses. Luckily, you are not being flanked. Second attack will hit you with a 20. A, Go ahead. As a reaction, I'm going to use uh, silvery barbs. All right. Oh. So you roll with disadvantage. Then he just misses you. Just misses you. For his third attack. Oh, crap. <laughs> you see he reaches back and a glob of green spittle comes out at you. 
smashing you on your side, you can hear your flesh sizzle. Take 11 points of acid damage. Got it. And that will be his turn. How about Miyagi? All right, so... That's the one that still has Hex on it. We're going to do Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast, let's see it. And this is for the Dragon Blood Ooze? Yep. The one that should still be hexed. Alrighty, what'd you roll? 23 will definitely hit. Alright, let me roll that again. And for those of you who are looking at our foundry, you can. Oh, my bad. I do not have foundry. You just missed that lovely Eldritch Blast animation. I'm sure it's going to come again. Yo, oh, yeah, for sure. All right, so what's your total damage? I am doing the math. If it loads, it's not loading for me. If it's on uh, Foundry, I see four. Yeah, I see four, but I have to. There's two beams, so. Okay. So you might have to roll a second time. So we'll do four for the first one. And don't forget your additional d6 for your hex damage. Elkson, you are on deck, by the way. I think you're muted. Making my plans. Okay. And we have a Mr. Robotnik as Josh. Well, you figure out the damage. Elkson, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if you call one of my crazy proposals from last time. Uh-oh. <laughs> but, um, what would you say would be to just stuff whatever paperwork is in on the desk right next to me into my bag? Just- oh, you can easily grab that. Grab a stack of paperwork. As you grab, uh, go ahead and roll in a quick... Would that um, be an action, bonus action, free action? What would that be, though? Uh, it's going to be at least a bonus action. However, if you use up to an action, you have a better chance of getting something more fulfilling. I... Choices, choices. All action to do it because mm-hmm. I can wild shape to start my plan for my bonus action. Alright, I would like you to roll a we'll do an investigation check to see how quick okay. or uh, investigation or perception whichever one you choose and um, we'll see how quickly you can determine what's of value. Let's see. Um, I'll do perception. 17 plus 2, 19. 19. Okay, you grab a tome, a bunch of scrolls, and as you're stuffing it into your bag, you knock over a couple beakers and a couple um, other scientific equipment, um, like a pan, um, some unique tools that look kind of odd. And as one of the tools falls down, you see it pops open a, a box that's on the ground there. And in the box, you see this gauntlet. Yo, he can't be keeping this shit (laughs) unlocked. Miyagi, you were right next to me, just saying. And I Uh, do not hear about the gauntlet, so... uh. The gauntlet seems to be adorned with dragon scales. Oh, I want it. (laughs) My primary concern is the threat. So after stuffing what I could in my backpack, I'm going to bonus action wild shape into a giant octopus. A giant octopus. Of course, I'm going to have to 
Now pull a giant octopus out. Which can be uh, out of water for up to an hour before it starts to suffocate. So. Did your research. Serves me right. <laughs> serves me right for stopping combat in the middle of the game. <laughs> you have time to plan. All right. Let's... I was already thinking of this before I had time to research, but I just pulling it up again. I was like, "Oh yeah, breathing is a thing." And then I saw that, and I'm like, "Oh." Okay. All right. So let's wild shape you. <laughs> Miyagi, and you I... are pushed back. I figured. All right. Well, I would be going. I would use my movement to go between this pump machine thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much of my plan you remembered from last time, but I'm gonna go between the machine thing and the, the not a dragon thing. Right yeah. there. Okay. So Miyagi can be near the gauntlet and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Miyagi, you yeah. see this giant octopus sort of just slither and push you aside. You have some slime left over on your fur. Because it definitely went this. through your uh, your space. And how much damage yes. did you do, by the way? Oh, 12 total. 12 total. Okay, so I already did. Yep. I need to do 8 more on this thing. Yep. Or Miyagi, nothing worse than a wet pussy. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Actually, that's, that's nothing awesome. better. I mean, honestly. Right. We're asking me, and it's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. But yeah, uh, next turn, I'm totally going to try and throw this machine at the not dragon. Yeah, we will see. Uh, it will be a ranged attack. It will be a disadvantage, because you're right next to him. So, just so you know. Well, no, my plan is to use as many tentacles as possible to rip that machine off and mm -hmm. just Whoa. <laughs> Onto the thing. Alrighty. It is now Sazen's turn. Alright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Star Shatter and I'm gonna attack the creature south of me. Alrighty. I am going to do this with advantage because of Silvery Barb. Sounds good. Go ahead and roll. Good thing for advantage. For a dirty 20. Dirty 20 will hit. I am going to use the feature of Evolving Sweep. Okay. Now, I know that these things are bigger, but I believe that I should be able to get the red creature in the sweep, correct? You can. You can. Now, here's the thing. If you do a complete revolution, you're going to hit the giant octopus as well. Uh, what I will do is, although this probably puts me in a not-so-great position, I am going to stop at the opposite side of um, the monster so that I'm flanking it with Elkson, or the octopus. Alrighty. I'm also using Booming Blade in this attack, so a um, couple of things going on. Let's go ahead and roll for damage. So it's going to be 11 slashing. And then... Uh, Five, uh, is it thunder or lightning? Thunder damage. And then I am going to... To that red creature. I believe it's a d4. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do I add anything to that, or is it just a d4? Just a d4. Uh, three slashing damage. All right. Now, let's explain exactly what all just happened. You see Sazen take out this new sword that she has, this scimitar that seems to ripple with energy and almost change shape a little bit. As she strikes out, you see she casts a spell that sheathes the entire blade in vibrations. It's almost like orange vibrations. An aura can be seen around the blade. As she strikes out, the blade extends and wraps around this horrific creature. As it does, she jumps and starts to spin around the creature, striking 
the ooze before setting down perfectly safe and the sword retracts dealing a good bit of damage does that complete your turn not even close oh. uh, for, my, for my second attack i will strike with star shatter again advantage because i'm flanking yes Or a 27. 27 will hit. All right. And then this one is just a normal strike for another 11 point slashing. All righty. And then I shall, for my bonus action, use my off uh, hand attack, which is the spark blade. So that's going to be a 27. 27 hits. All right, and then just for funsies, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all three clicks into this uh, into this action here. Okay. So that is an additional one d eight plus two lightning damage, and it needs to make a con saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Port and it gets a four. What happened? I'm gonna port and its con save and give it a four. Oh, okay. okay. So what's it all together? Well, what's your total damage? Oh, wait, hold on. The con save uh, means that it, it uh, basically cannot use its reaction, I believe. Unless it gets below a nine and then it's stunned until the start of its next turn. Then it got below a nine. <laughs> All right, so let's do some damage. Well, I'm helping, guys. <laughs> so three plus two is five, and then a D8. Oh, by the way, I need Elkson and Suzen to make a constitution saving throw. All right, just a second. Yep. Uh, so, wow, but so as the as the octopus. Oh right, that's right. Yeah. Our octopus. So three slashing and um, four lightning damage. All righty. And you said what kind of save? Constitution. Octopus is so much better. Being around this creature, it exudes this sickening, acidic taste. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fuck you are. Creature. I got a dirty twenty. You pass thirteen. You are poisoned. Now, technically, that would have given you disadvantage on all your strikes, but because I remembered it after your turn, I will not. Got it. I will not uh, take that into account. <laughs> all right, and that will be the end of my turn. Now I just need to see where the hell is the poisoned. There. Oh, no, it's that. the poison is leaving their bodies. So nice of it. <laughs> nope, there's the poison. Uh -oh, All right, there it is. <laughs> it is now the dragon flesh grafter's turn, and seeing as it didn't have a target yet, so Zen was so nice that it gave him a target. <laughs> you see this humanoid creature come up. That's. Honestly, the, this grafting is very raw and visceral and just disgusting. It comes up, and let's see what all I can do. Alrighty. It comes up, and it grabs a pipe out of the vat that it was in, and it's just this long, rusted um, metal pipe that comes down on you. And that's going to be that. It will not hit you. For its second attack, it comes up with the Dragon Claw and attempts to strike. And that's not, I'm rolling a two and a five. That's not going to hit you either. Luckily, it's the other Dragon Flesh Grafter's turn. He sees what his companion does and follows suit, grabbing a large pipe and moves forward on Suzen and attacks with. Essentially a great club. And I am not rolling good at all. With advantage, that's a one and a six. Oh. Oof. And then that's a 25 for the dragon As claw. A reaction, I'm going to use shield. You've used your reaction. You used silvery barbs. Nope. But turn. you had your turn. That's right. <laughs> 
All right, you dip, dodge, duck, and dive, and miss out on all the attacks. Gavry, it is your turn. He's like still looking dizzy from his hammer spin earlier. Looks up to see this. Everything is as per usual turned into an absolute shit show. Uh, and there's a giant octopus in the room now. It's like, mm, yeah, mm-hmm. part of the course, I guess. I- um, he's gonna wind his hammer up and go for some some boops over here. Alrighty. On on slimy boy. Slimy boy is looking very very rough. You can see right. that. It's moving up a pseudopod, but it, half of it falls to the ground, and it tries to pick it back up to reform. It's looking pretty messed up. Ah, oh, beans. My, my hammer is not in my in foundry. I'll just roll it from beyond. Oh, I can... Wah! Did that, did that do a roll? It did. Uh, it did a damage roll. Well, that's not that's not quite what we needed. <laughs> I can just I can put in the warhammer very quickly. Thank you. Oh, there it is. Okay, boop. Did this do an attack roll? That did an attack roll. Does a nineteen hit? A nineteen, I'm pretty sure will hit, and your warhammer is now in your inventory. Yay! And equipped. Woo. All right, so Did your damage, your damage of 14, you see this creature, you smash down with uh, with your Warhammer, and seeing it's bludgeoning damage, it doesn't really do as much. However, you seem to strike its core as it plops down and is now just liquid on the ground. Uh, disgusting. I think from the momentum for my second attack, he kind of like kids forward not expecting it to be and just goes skating across the goop uh for for comedy purposes i'm gonna say can i can i move yeah one two three four five am i flanking here uh no you would have to get one more to the left like here yep yeah so he like goes sliding across the ooze and then is gonna yeah Take his second boop. Hang on, I'm finding the button. Advantage! Pew! Oh, that's some. That I don't want to roll in this anymore. <laughs> no, like that will that not. Number. That will not that, hit. You come down, bad. and you see it just moves its dragon arm up as it just. Bounces back, your warhammer kind of shakes in your hands and kind of stings. Right? Like, he's just basically skidded into this vat thing, and it's just like, well, that's not what I was hoping for. Um, and as my... F- yeah, why not? As my final thing, I'm gonna try and do my little, my stunny boop. My key thing. Alright. How on the beans do I... Oh, there's a button! Look at that! So it has to. Do it's I roll this or? Oh, the save button. Phew. Well, that's part of your. A stunning strike is part of your hit. You hit and then you do stunning, stunning oh, strike. And you hit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Never mind that. Take that back. All right. Um, so save your key um, point. Yeah. I'm gonna run away now. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now you did do an attack on it, so and with the mobile feet, you do not incur an attack of opportunity. Heck yeah, he's just like cover, leggies and goop, gonna get back up on his feet and go skating. I don't know where's the, a place that isn't awful. Can I get in between these? Can I like go? It, well, it difficult terrain, definitely. But you can. I don't think that's going to bother him too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, d- does that complete your turn? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think. All right. The I ne- made an, an effort. It was a poor effort. <laughs> now, uh, I would like to Zen to roll a perception check. You got it. Didn't for you, DM. Say again? Yeah, I know if it 
question. Mm -hmm. So what close I to being know, natural twenty. Would it be easier to rip the machine out and smash the not dragon, or yeet the not dragon into the machine? Uh, you can roll a wisdom check using Elkson's wisdom or the octopus's, whichever is higher. But I believe it's Elkson's. Um, uh, I rolled a 16 on perception. You see some of the wounds that you have given this creature mm -hmm. heal up. Oh. Okay. At the start of its turn. It's the end of its turn because it's stunned. Yep. You guys are all welcome. 14. <laughs> 14? Thank you. Uh, you're thinking probably the machine. Yeeting the machine into the yep. dragon? Yep. Yep. All right. It is now Miyagi's turn. All right. So, do you have shiny clang clang right next to you? I, I know. What would it be to grab said shiny clang clang? That would be an action. I will let you know that this creature that you are five feet from seems to have long arms. The box is on is on the ground next to the table. You would have to move five feet to get to it. Do it. <laughs> YOLO! I'm nearly dead anyway. Um It's five feet away, right? You have to take a five foot step to get to it. I'm going to take a five-foot step back. Attack of opportunity. Shield. Even before you know what happens? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm scared! I'm scared! It slashes out with you at you with a claw. And your AC is now what? 21. I have yet to roll above a 10. You do not take a lot of damage. I'm not even going to tell you how much. Oh. It misses you. All right, cool. Um, it would take an action to grab it off the ground, right? Mm hmm. <sighs> Do it. Do it. Do it. I'm going to grab it. I, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> you grab it. I need you to make a dexterity. No, nah, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And then. Come on top of this table, <laughs> just to create some more distance. <laughs> uh, difficult. You can give me a dexter an acrobatics check, you know, to climb on top acrobatics. of it. And, yeah. Okay. It's got a bunch of stuff on it. Still, it has a bunch of. Uh, I snagged a bunch of stuff off. You did. Head. That's why I'm giving him a chance. That's that's an eighteen. Eighteen. You're on top of the table. Woo! All right. Um. Use my action. Eep. I didn't mean to go that far. Sure, that works. Uh, I think that's all I can. You do. use your action, reaction, and your movement. I, I yeah. Uh, well, can I? Since that dragon blood is like dead, and it was hex, can I use my bonus action to put it on the big boy? Yes, you may. All right, cool. That's what I'd like to do. Alrighty. I'm gonna eat a tank. <laughs> it is Elkson's turn. Octo Elks. Strength, Strength check. That <laughs> is a 19 plus the octopus's strength. You see so these tentacles r wrap around this and crunch the pipes that are still pumping something as you hear the screeching of metal <laughs> I need you to make a dexterity saving throw from the minor explosion that's going to happen Okay. I'm so glad I moved 16 plus <laughs> what is a squid's dexterity 1 so 17 17 you will take 7 points of force and fire damage That hurts because I'm already wounded. Well, no, that's on the octopus's hit points. Oh, yeah. You have 40-some left. 
45. Okay, so what do you that's your action to grab it? Um It's not a whole lot I can do bonus action wise as the octopus cuz I, I guess just prepare to eat this onto the dragon, not uh, dragon. All righty. You could tickle it. You could tickle the big boy. I need you to make another constitution saving throw as the octopus. Today that's seventeen plus uh one eighteen. Oh. You pass. Yeah. You are not poisoned. All right. So Zen. Question. If I use a bonus action to Misty Step, can I cast a spell as an action? You can, as long as it's a cantrip. Still continuing to pump. Like, is there just stuff oozing out of the? Pool there is <laughs> the sickening green liquid. Hmm. So that was going into action? the bottom tank. That there is still a body inside. Oh yeah, there is another tank down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I am going to just stay <laughs> where I am and. Uh, Flash at this big dragon thing between us. Yep. So disadvantage cancels out advantage. So these are just normal strikes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does a sixteen hit? A sixteen does not. Okay. I'm surprised we don't have music going. For my second. I attack. did have music going. It it didn't continue. So we'll we'll try this again. Twenty one hit. Twenty one does hit. All right, going to do that with Booming Blade. So for eight slashing. Oh, it so How's that music? Thunder. All right. Uh, why, why are you zooming around everywhere? And then for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Misty Step. And okay. I'm going to teleport right next to like one square off from where that yellow circle thing is. Revolving. All right. Where exactly now? Uh, to the northernmost point. There's like a gold circle there. I don't know if maybe I'm just seeing it on a Elkson screen, but to the left of it. So one more to the left. That's been there since Gavry's turn. That I don't know oh. why it hasn't disappeared. Okay. And that's as far back as I can get, right? Yep. All right, and then that is going to be the end of my turn. All righty. It is the Dragon Flesh Grappler's turn. It is going to come up and attempt to attack Suzanne again. Is that the closest? Like three other combatants here. Yes, I know, <laughs> but you're the one. He, <laughs> you. Misty stepped in his line of sight. You're still just further away. You to try to hit over you. here. You're the hardest one to hit. Look at me. <laughs> oh, the other one is going for Gavry. Don't worry about that. That's a natural cool. twenty. Of course. On the on the great club, so that's a total Ooh. of fourteen damage. damage. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not Emotional damage. Emotional damage. All right, <laughs> <My> emotional damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it comes in with the claw. That is a natural eleven. Oh, that misses. <laughs> yeah, that misses. <laughs> the other that dragon. Please remind me of mortal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other one will move up and seize Gavry in this. Pinned in this between these two vats, and we'll attempt oh, to bash <laughs> with the great club. Oh no! That's gonna be seventeen to hit. Oh dang! That's my that's my AC. That's nine points of bludgeoning damage. I've already put it on your character. Okay. And for its second attack, it will not be able to reach the claw back there. But we'll hit with the Great Club again. 
but a one and a two on the die will not work. Yeah. So that completes his turn. It is Gavry's turn. Oh, okay. Bermain, I forgot to ask. Uh, do I make any type of uh, saving throw to see if I can be unpoisoned? Uh, let's see. I believe that you are... I think it's poisoned for a certain amount of Until time. Until the abomination's day. next turn, which means that you will be not poisoned at the start of the round. Okay. Yeah, it's usually an amount of time or if someone uses... Um... Mm-hmm. The spell thing. Yep. I can't remember. Hi, Gavry, what are you doing? Um, let's see. Just to cover myself, first thing, I'm gonna run up and boop it. I don't like it. I won't give a boop. Pull up my things. Uh, I will say this is going to be kind of difficult terrain for you, but being mobile, I'm going to give you a chance to still go around him and all that. It will just uh, cost. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, just because it's tight space right there. Okay. All right. Warhammer. Boop. Does a 23 hit? 23 definitely hits. Yeah. We'll give a boop for eight. I would like to try and do the stunny thing. All right. That, what's your saving throw? Not good. It's like 14 con. All right. Let's see. I'm rolling like crap. Let's see. That's a five. <sighs> Yo, did I, just, did I just stun him? He's stunned. Cool. Uh, then I'm going to take a bunch of other attacks now that <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm about to get. Uh, do you have to apply the the stun thing to it? So I, I already don't did. Have to, oh, excellent. So these should be auto crits, right? Uh, well, stunned. Let's see. Is it stunned or paralyzed? I'm thinking of. Paralyzed, I believe. Let me pull up the rules here real quick. Right. <laughs> Exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, prone, stunned, is incapacitated, it can't move, speak, automatically fails strength and dexterity checks, attack rolls against the creature has advantage. So you just get advantage on the rest of your attacks, and anybody else does until it's not stunned. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm just looking at the wording. On unarmed strike as a bonus action, real quick. Mm -hmm. I want to try and do something cheeky. <laughs> of course you do. Of course. Okay. Yeah, I should. I should be able to to do the thing I want to do, which is. It fails dex and strength checks right now, right? Correct. Um, then I just want to straight up grapple it and move move it politely out of my way. Thank you. Uh, let's take it for a ride. Out of... Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Can I can I call this to Zen as like my, my free talk action and just be like, Do you want this near you? Or where do you want this? <laughs> But I'm sorry, I, I zoned out. What? Where do I want what? Uh, Gavry is asking if you would like the big meanie butt next to Gavry closer to you or further. Um, if you could push it to right behind where the other one is, that would help me out for my next move. Excellent. <laughs> I will yeet that thing. Like, and the way Gavry grapples is again weird because he's a very weak, scrawny looking dude. So he's basically WrestleManiaing, like, hooking this thing under <laughs> the elbows and spinning it with his hammer. And then, just for insult to injury as a bonus action, I'm a. I'm a boop it with my unarmed boop. <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm, I'm being so rude. What a rude deer. Look at that shitty 17. Just 17 hit. hits. <gasps> Yo, man. Yo. 
<laughs> and then I'm going to run. <laughs> right back where I came from. Thank you. Alrighty. That's my turn. Alrighty, it is the dragon flesh abomination. You are no longer poisoned, Suzanne. Okay. And it looks next to this octopus, the biggest creature, and will take all three of its attacks on it. Oh. It will claw the octopus. Why is the music not going? It's dramatic tension. <laughs> it is. A 12. Will 12 hit? Uh, yes, unfortunately. Giant octopus is only an 11. Alright, a 12. You take 7 slashing and 7 poison damage. Uh, oh no! 45 it's, minus 14 is... It's second claw attack. Is a 23 <laughs> for a total of nine more damage. Okay. And then it spits at you. That's just rude. That is rude. Does a 16 hit? It does. I, knew, I just told you it does. <laughs> for 13 acid damage. Wow. So you That's should be at. You're at 18. Right now. Okay. You're definitely a poison octopus, right? Some uh, resistance there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's at this time. You guys here. Oh shit. You have destroyed my creations! Do you know how long I had to cultivate that pure of a sample? How many low-born, muddy blood, disgusting creatures? Bah! It's no matter. You have only disrupted my annex library laboratory. But you will pay for that blood with your own! What if we didn't, though? <laughs> Where the fuck is he? Because this machine might be going <laughs> at him instead. As you see... Him in his own goo. <laughs> near the southern point of the map, this gnome. And it's his turn. And let's see... He doesn't see me, does he? <laughs> Yep, he's going to do this. Upcast a fireball. I'm going to use my reaction to counter spell. Okay, well, oh, wait, level I spell. Think, I don't know if I'm, I'm wait, I don't think I'm close enough. I have to be within 60 feet. Um oh. nope. 65 no. feet away. <laughs> he definitely like took a dramatic step forward when he did that, though, right? Nope. <laughs> yeah. I need yeah, yeah, yeah. Elkson, Miyagi, Sazen, and two of his creations to make dexterity saving throws. Nineteen. Nineteen saves. Yo, that's better than 21. the trap on this door. 21 <laughs> saves. It's not gonna do much fucking... I'm about to fucking die. So. 15. 15 fails. Oh, I was ready to see that octopus. <laughs> How right much now. health do you have, Miyagi? I have five hit points. Okay, yeah, you're going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go. Elkson, I'm you have... Bye-bye. Yeah, the octopus goes bye-bye. And then you take seven points of damage. What happens to the machine I was just holding? It just falls to the ground. Okay. Miyagi, you fall unconscious. Yep. What else is new? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. 
So then, you take 12 points of fire damage. I'm going to, as a reaction, cast Absorb Elements and take half of that. All right. That's six, right? Yep. Forgot about that. <laughs> Oops. Alrighty. Miyagi, roll death saving throw. Actually, I'm sorry. I roll your death saving throw. Yeah, you roll them. Alright, let's roll. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Did he not 20? Meowgi. <laughs> <gasps> You're up with up? one hit point. Yes! <laughs> and it seems <laughs> like when care. you fell, your hand fell into the gauntlet. It latches <laughs> on. <laughs> you feel the strength of metallic dragons coursing through you and that shock to your system you're like you are up you you're just, prone you, you have died your way into your vestige yeah you have one hit point and it's your turn okay okay fucking I, why can i not use that to hit somebody you did yeah, you got me with I'm going to stand up, which is half my movement. Yep. And I'm going to shout to everyone, be like, we should probably get running. And I'm going to raise my hand, the gauntleted hand, and do a fourth level subtle spell magic missile. Okay. That is towards the gnome. Alright, roll your damage. Alrighty, force. Four. Six, Twenty-eight points of damage. All right, nice. And then I am going to start making my way towards the door. And I will use feline agility. <laughs> I'm going to basically book it the fuck out. All right, you get to the door. The door is shut. Fuck. Hey, at least it's not trapped again. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we got that with our faces. Is that complete your turn? Yeah. Elkson, it is your go. Two choices right now. Um. You see some white on this monstrosity in front of you. Some white scales. <laughs> I'm charging Who this could that be? I'm dire wolf bonus action dire wolfing and charging this motherfucker down here. Alrighty. Let me pull up the dire wolf. You will get an attack for opportunity on you. I'm gonna eat I don't give a shit. I'm gonna eat this fucking asshole. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, let's turn Elkson into a dire wolf here. Will they get an attack? Because I thought, isn't dragon flesh abomination stunned or what's that? It is not stunned anymore. Oh, gotcha. That's the he it's, it's hex though. Oh, okay, okay. So that's Elkson now. Ah, that's such an old man-looking wolf. I love it. <laughs> Is all white with shockingly blue eyes. Like, Alexon is a pure white wolf. That will be an 18. That hits. 10 slashing damage and 4 poison damage. Okay. I charge at the motherfucker. 
And what's your movement as uh, 50 feet? Yeah, you can get uh -huh. there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can get there. And I'm gonna eat this motherfucker. Do I get any advantages from the charge? No. <laughs> That's not great. 16 plus 5 is 21. That will hit. Uh, 2d6. Chompy chompy. 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 3 piercing damage. Uh, so 9 piercing damage. And it has to make it uh, uh, DC, uh, strength saving throw. Or be knocked prone. And what's your save? I don't think it matters. He has a minus one. And I rolled a five, so. <laughs> he is knocked prone. And I oh, am good. Like, snarling, growling over this man. His own blood dripping out of my mouth. Hmm. Alrighty. Let's see what I can do here. Okay. I love this as a fun, family-friendly game. Yep. <laughs> so Zen, it is your turn. Alright, so... I am going to cast Lightning Bolt at the two creatures in front of me. Alrighty, Dexterity saving throws. What's your save? Uh, 16. They are I not... do believe the second one is stunned. <laughs> it is. They are not very dexterous. The one right in front of you attempts to move out of the way, but got a 15. All right, so let's see. Oh, come on. That was terrible. 27. You're not, like you're, you're going to be shitting me. 27 was the exact health of the one right in front of you. <laughs> nice. I only saw it was ones, and I was like, come on. <laughs> Um, pardon me, but, uh, get wrecked, sir. <laughs> However, the other one that was stunned is still up. Alright, and then what I'm going to do... Because I don't think I have any bonus actions I can mm -mm. take. I am going to... I want to climb up on that that is above Gavry. Alright, uh, uh, that one is broken. It, it's broken. Oh. So, I mean, you could climb up it, but it's broken glass at the top. Who knows if it's going to withstand your weight? Um, I use superpowers. All right. So, oh, speaking of which, Gavry, I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. Never mind. That answers what I was going to do there. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to move in a direction that is. To the oh, right. That's a three, me. Captain. Okay. You I'm are. Gavry, you take from prolonged exposure to this area, you're going to take 12 points of poison damage, and you are considered poisoned. Welcome to the club. Oh boy. It doesn't feel nice. <laughs> nah, it's bad. It's bad, Club. I regret my membership. <laughs> uh, go ahead and put the 12 points on you, if you don't mind. Oh, I was wondering if you were doing it, because you did the other damage. It, it's I easier when I roll it, so... Sometimes. Okay. Does that complete your turn, Suzanne? No, I want to move in front of Miyagi. Alright. Alright, it is... The dragon flesh grappler's turn, who is dead, and it is the other one's turn, who is stunned, and now it is Gavry's turn. Oh man, this hiding spot not not so great. It, it's got the feel bads over here. Um. Hmm. This is this is all incredibly problematic. Don't forget, you can hover your mouse over the creature to see their current health state. Mm, I see, I see. Well, I mean, while we're running the gauntlet, might as well, right? Let's run out here. Uh, give this awful thing a boop. 
Thank you. Pull up my thing. More hammer advantage. Yeah. Does 17 or <laughs> 5? 17 damage. hits. Does 5 damage take it out? It is still up. I will take my second boop at it. More hammer advantage. 16, probably. Well, it would be... Yeah, it is still stunned till the end of your turn. So, yes, yeah, 16 does hit. And does 7... Take it out? You come down or come across with your war hammer striking its jaw. You can see the head shake violently and you hear a sickening snap as it falls to the ground. Hooray! Ugh. And he's still spinning. Uh, gonna... <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, gonna take a bonus action boop. On you this are bully. in. You are in this creature's space right now. That's okay. I'm bonus action boop it. He would get an attack of opportunity, but he already used his attack of opportunity because you haven't attacked him yet. Yeah, boy. So he Another does not get two. one, unfortunately. Yeah. 16 does not hit. Does not hit. I would like to use a key point and try and stun it. <laughs> you have to hit him to stun him. Oh, you're right. One day I'll learn. One day I'll learn that. Uh, I'm gonna run uh, maybe a different spot. The, the poison that I was afflicted by, is it the whole area or is it just the vats that I made the vats. for life choice of standing <laughs> Yes, by? the vats. The broken vats, which this one is broken too, right here. You were just in between two of them. Yeah, you know, the best spot. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna use the rest of my movement and just. Over here, I think. Is that. Kinda like here good? Yep, that'll be fine. Cool, that's my turn. Alrighty, it is this Dragon Flesh Abomination's turn. And. It's going to oh, oh no, this the guy. Are moving. Ah, uh, actually, this one will. Suzanne is the closest one now. Barring it. <laughs> that will not hit. This next one is going to be a... This claw comes striking down at you. And hits. What does it hit with? Uh, 26. It's gonna hit my shield, bitch. Alright. Ah! <laughs> and then finally, it will spit at you again. Okay. For a natural 20. <laughs> okay. I, you can see it on the stream. It shows it. <laughs> um, I need to spell slot for that. How many hit points do you have left? 17. You fall down to the ground. Oh. 23 acid damage. That's what I get for trying to help Miyagi. <laughs> Miyagi, you see Suzen dodge, throw up a shield real quick to block this other claw, but as she does the face of this creature is right in front of her as he just lobs this green loogie at her. She screams. Go and give me a scream, Suzanne. <laughs> I feel like her scream would be like, nah, bitch. As, she's fall <laughs> as she is down to the ground and you see some of her hair some of her skin is starting to dissolve in this puddle. What the fuck? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Miyagi, it is your turn. Fourth level magic missile point blank right at its head. That's another 28. As you your missiles come flying around it, it just strikes. <laughs> it looks at you. 
falls to the ground, dead. Oh dear, that thing was ugly. Um, and then, as a bonus, does she still have this, like, goo on her? Uh, yes, she does. Okay. As a bonus action, can I just, like, take some of my cloak and then just kind of, like, wipe it off of her? Just to okay. make her work pretty? Because I know, I know she would hate to die ugly. <laughs> Sounds good. One second, guys. So for Alexis almost died doing Suzanne's thing, and now Suzanne's dying doing Alex's thing. It's full circle. Circle is complete. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. It is now Yosan's turn. Yosan seeing everything that's going on. <sighs> will not lose my research as you see he's casting a spell he says this from underneath Elkson and Elkson from underneath him you see a blue shimmering portal that he slips through and he disappears we are out of combat people I rush over to the Zen and feed her a berry. While I'm like holding my chest and coughing, just like pull out a nice good berry and like, here you go. You don't get to die yet, you have work to do. So Zen, you return back to the land of the living. Do I smell burnt hair? As soon as she says that, he's just gonna meow. He's gonna like between oh. deep, heavy breathing. He's just gonna cast prestidigitation and clean her up. I will also hand a berry to meow. <laughs> oh yeah, sweetheart. Thank you. Ha. Huh. So. Uh, um. Did we win? I th I think he left. We haven't won till he's dead. Alexander, are you all right? And um, he's gonna like hobble limp over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alexander has not changed out of her diarrhoal form. She's still standing there, snarling at where he was. She's you have a bit of his. She's, if she's snarling, he'll hold distance a little ways back. And be like, Alexan. Meowgi would probably help Susan up. She's not hard yet. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hudson, we still need to find Siberius. She, she's still staring at that spot, not responding to you guys. Elkson, you still have a piece of his robe in your teeth stained with a little bit of blood Miyagi you feel that gauntlet pulse with power and you instantly know what it does it is on your character sheet oh yes What are y'all doing? Is it, is it on my right hand or my left hand? Uh, it will be on your left hand. Alright, cool. We really probably should get out of here. Oh my gosh. We'll, we'll find him, Alexon. Pay for this. It's just not going to be today, unfortunately. Else, we'll just kind of lower her head a bit. She's not dropping Dyra Wolf form. She'll skulk over to Miyagi and gesture for him to hop on her back. <sighs> I'm gonna go to the desk and whatever notes that um, Elkson wasn't able to grab, I'm gonna grab now. I wanna go over to the last person in the tube. See what's going on here from a 
I don't know, a distance I can make them out. Say that again, um, Gavry. Uh, I, Gavry approaches the last creature in the tube that had not broken out this capsule at bottom right. You see another one of those grafters. Um, the smaller version is in there. However, it doesn't seem to be breathing anymore since the machine that was keeping it alive was destroyed. He looks relieved because he was going to <laughs> put it out of its misery if not. So, what are y'all doing? I'm going to motion to Miyagi. Like, we really need to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, clearly, I was the first one that said anything. Oh, Back to the oh, sewers, so then. Just staring at Miyagi, waiting. Oh, yes. I, I'm sorry. Sorry, puppy. And I'm going to pet Elkson and, and climb on. <laughs> and just, like, lay down. Like, just holding it. Just too tired to do anything. All right. Hand him, like, ten more of my good bears. <laughs> <laughs> Just a handful. <laughs> so I take it you guys make it back to the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yawning rapid end. Are you trying to go through stealthily through town or just parading around? Elkson give a shit. Elkson is still a fucking dire wolf. They're, I'm sorry, no amount of stealthing is going to make a dire wolf not noticeable in a fucking city. I'm about to say, as stealthy as three tired ass people riding on a dire wolf can be. Three. <laughs> we will forego the rolls and say that you make it back to the Yawning Rapid Inn. This time of night, because you guys did go at night, there are a few patrons still there, but it's winding Elkson? down. Does the Elkson even fit in the door in direwolf form? Yes, it's double doors. And you get a bunch of looks. Just huff at them. As you see, Dorbis is there. The slightly overweight tiefling. Well then, I yeah. see that you have uh, a little worse for wear. I hate to see the other folks. Has Gavry shaken off his poison at this point? Yes, most definitely. Excellent. He's still kind of like holding his chest and having difficulty breathing, though. <laughs> but yep. he's like one more round and handy. <laughs> one more round, you would have gotten a chance at a mutation. Oh, oh. oh! You think you got all that, Miyagi, being cat dragon? I'm gonna be a man. I'm gonna be a deer. I'm gonna be it all. I'm a dragon too. <laughs> we could be siblings. <laughs> oh, twinsies. <laughs> Monk cat form. Oh I mean, my gosh, so, uh, I'm gonna drop some levels in Sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you all go up to your room and I will see about uh, getting you some food and ale. Alex and will just take the two that are on her back upstairs. <laughs> unless they object. <laughs> the Zen is sprawled out on you in the most overdramatic fashion, like... <laughs> 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 Even with present hesitation, it doesn't fix all the melted hair, though. <gasps> Your bangs are uneven. You know. <laughs> Ten point psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> you go unconscious again? <laughs> Gabri pulls out more bears. <laughs> so, what would you guys like to do for the night before you rest? I'm going to go through my green book to legit see if there's a spell that will fix my hair. Okay. I've been hours doing this. <laughs> you do find that one ritual again. And the dark one? The dark one. And you remember our conversation about it. You realize what it's for. Yes. <laughs> I'll Elkson. contemplate on it, but I don't say anything. Okay. okay. Elkson, your time as Direwolf has ended by now. Alexson will just kind of, like, 
go into her, her room. She doesn't even bother to shut the door from her room to the common room. She just kind of goes and sits down on the bed. A few moments goes by until some f fresh food has been brought up to you. You have your choice of spiced potatoes, um, venison, some fresh cod, steamed vegetables, and ale and wine. No words are exchanged, just laid out in the common room for you. A few more moments. Oh, go ahead. Alexan is just going to stay in her room holding that little claw from earlier. A few more moments goes by. And you hear a knock at the door. Uh, who, who, who is that? It's Tybris. Now he will open the door with a piece of, piece of cod in his mouth, unabashedly eating it. I heard from Dorbis that you had a rough time. Oh, if you can't tell, we look like shit and feel like it. Um, Elkson has some notes that I think could be of interest to you. He starts walking towards Elkson Reserve. She does not acknowledge him. He or she? I thought Elkson was she. She. Okay. It probably cut off. Okay. Tyrus will just sit down on the ground, his knees up, and wait. So everyone may take a long rest. Oh, thank God. Yay! Gavry, as per usual refuses the food. He'll take some water, but he's got good berries. He's fine. And on this note, we're going to take a quick break to change Yay. gears a little bit. So stay with us for the continuation of the story and see how will Elkson get their revenge or justice, whichever com comes first. See y'all soon.
And we are back. So our party had a very easy combat. I'm going to have to step it up a little bit in order to challenge them. And um, found some secrets. Haven't actually looked at any of the secrets that they found. And was dealt a minor defeat as the architect of these mutations escaped you guys have been resting you've gotten your long rest Alkson throughout some of the night you succumb to sleep you wake up and Tybris is still just sitting there awake waiting to talk Start crying. And she just kind of starts to break down. You see him approach you and puts his hand up, but then stops. He, he definitely doesn't, he doesn't know how to comfort. What can I do? I don't... 
I don't know what's worse. The fact that he got away. Or the fact that I was so excited by the idea of getting to kill him. I can understand them. You wanting to give him pain. You wanting to end his life. From the little that I saw when I was there, he's earned that fate many times over. Do you know where he went? He said it was just one of his labs. Okay. I didn't used to be like this. I never wanted to hurt anyone when I started on this. I just wanted to find you. And then I got people worth protecting. And I started getting scarier. I chastised one of our friends, one of my friends, for making bad choices and going down a dark path. But here I am, I was so focused on wanting to kill this man that I couldn't be bothered to heal my friends. I... I'm not one to judge you. I wasn't there. I don't think your friends would judge you either. The world isn't light and dark. I'm sure there are some lights and dark out there, but the majority of the world is a bunch of gray. We do our best going through it, and yeah, we're going to get dirty. Just try to... I don't... I don't like the gray. Gray is scary and confusing. So what do you want to do? I, I still want to hunt him and that scares me. Well. I have an idea. Come. Let's go talk to your friends. Try her face, but she's still crying a little bit. As you guys are walking out of your room, he, he does try to pat you on the on your back, but you can tell it's it's awkward as shit. He he doesn't know how to give you that comfort. He's, it, he's just not that type of person. He's trying, though. <laughs> so the rest of you, you've had breakfast even brought up to you. Uh, you all are sitting down to a nice <coughs> nice meal uh, with Gavry eating a berry. Yep. Made <sighs> ten more as my last spell slot last <laughs> night. And as, as part of his morning ritual, again, just a monumental task to stand up in the morning and then join people. <laughs> but I don't know if he stood directly at the table, but like maybe just leaning on the nearest wall. <laughs> he gives a nod uh, to Elkston and a weird look to Tybius, like, you stayed in her room? All, all right. Oh, scandal. So, 
<laughs> like you believe that for a second about Elkson. <laughs> Here is uh Here's the deal. Yosan definitely needs to his operation needs to stop. I've got a network of informants that will start looking for his other laboratory. That's going to take some time, though. And I find that idle hands are definitely dangerous, especially with this Motley crew. <laughs> Right, like, at the mention of it taking more time, like, it's understandable, but, like, Gabrita's shift a bit across his arms. So I've got a job for all of you. We have some of our people that were taken and are in a, a prison. I would like you all to go in and free them. This place is pretty nasty. The guards... They're not really guards. They are... Sadistic. They aren't the type of guards that were at the Colosseum. These are people who routinely... Abuse... And beat... The prisoners. What do you all say? Gabri mutters something to himself and Sylvan, but again, I don't think anyone here speaks it, so it's just... <laughs> you believe you just got raided, so... Oh, we did? Oh, Sir Kits, <gasps> thank you for the raid! I appreciate it! Thank you! Thank you, Sir Kits. Hey. I'm, not sure I'm not sure why the announcement didn't play, but I have to figure that out. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, this is our D and D campaign, a uh, homebrew world, uh, homebrew adventure, with my lovely cast of characters, who are just dealing with a defeat and a victory. As soon as Gavry mutters something, Miyagi's eyes, as opposed to looking at his shiny new clean clang, are going to directly look over towards Gavry. Miyagi speaks Sylvan. Then you would have heard him say, like, everyone in this realm is just a disaster. <laughs> hmm. That's good to know. He doesn't say anything, but right, it's good right. to know. So has no idea, but, like, you see he's not pleased with the idea of going anywhere near prison, especially one described with sadistic guards. His ears are kind of, like, pinned back a bit. Now, this prison, it's a holding area it's for them to take whatever dissidents they have there for either execution or to a much worse place. They're only going to be there for a few days. It's a simple structure. One floor surrounded by a moat with only one central room inside. There's one exit and one entry. So are we trying to make noise or are we just trying to... I leave that up to this? you. If they, if they happen to have to repair it, that's more funds away from other places. Okay. Elkson, how do you feel about this mission? Don't, I don't think I should have made choices for the group. I'm not asking you to make a choice, I'm asking how you feel. I feel like this whole place is fucked up and every bit of it needs changing. You're not wrong there. And I suppose this is another mission that's pro bono. 
Well, I am paying for your food, your board, your freedom. He does have a point. Do you need a little spending money, maybe to fix that bedhead that you're dealing with right now, or... <laughs> Does this then say anything, or is this... <laughs> You see the lightning start to form on her fingers, and then she's like, you know what? I'm growing as a person. <laughs> the intel that we do have is that the leader in this prison is sort of like you, Suzanne. They yeah. are... They have some abilities, but they are also more melee folks focused. Hmm. Well, I'm in. I'll leave you guys to it. If you want in, let Torbus know. He'll give you information and transport out of the city. Out of the city. <laughs> Suddenly, Gabri's very interested. <laughs> like, when you're leaning on a wall and you kind of slip a bit as you, like, <laughs> snap to attention. <laughs> yes, it is at least two days' travel outside the city. Maybe for some. How soon can we start this? As soon as you are ready to go. Do you happen to know if it would be easier during the day or by night? Depends on your assault. If you're doing a full frontal assault, why not do it during the day? During night, I mean, there's a lot of different variables there. Cavry squints but says nothing at another daylight mission. Will we have any reinforcements or is it just the four of us? The four of you. Mm. Would, but it would probably be best to sneak our way in and blast our way out. I leave you to it. Rest well. As he goes, he stops for a second. Looks like he has the inkling of going in for a hug with Alexon, but then just nods and walks out. Wow. And we'll start fidgeting with the cloth in her hand again. It's kind of down at her side. So, when would y'all like to go? Are we doing this? Are we not? Um, I'm in. I'm interested in this, uh, this melee caster. You think night is the best time? Well, it's going to take two days, so if, even if we leave, we'd still have to wait until night. I do like the idea of sneaking in and blasting our way out. Um, I suppose Tiberius can get us any schematics on the prison. Ideally, that would be what his recon brings us. Uh, do you still have those notes, Oxen? I was just wondering if you shared them with our friend here. I did not. He didn't ask, and I kind of forgot till you mentioned them. Do you mind if I take a look at them? She'll kind of sprawl them out on the table in front of her, also glancing at them, seeing if she understands any of it. Um, looking at it, Briefly, um, you can see that it is different notes on Dragonborn, how to basically, in fact, give me an Arcana check, anybody who's reading. Okay, I'll go. Oh my goodness gracious. Natural 20 for a total of 26. A 2 for a total of 2. Natural uh, 1 for a total of 9. 
All right, so not reading. <laughs> so Elkson and Suzen, it deals a lot with draconic and dragon energies and blood and um, all that. Miyagi, you have determined that he has found a way to basically take dragon blood, uh, dragonborn blood, and dilute everything that's not dragon out of it and basically filter it and make it more powerful, almost as powerful as pure dragon blood. And that he's using this to fuel some arcane uh, contraptions, some arcane inventions. Um, he has found that sorcerers with some dragon in them are actually so diluted that it's almost a waste to use their blood. That's why he wasn't all that interested in you. Well, that's an insult to my character. And I will relay the information. Um, does and it mention any of the machines that, like... It mentions a machine to... that is attempting to bring... You see the word lich, but it's not associated with like a humanoid with the natural 20 I'm just going to give this to you I can't believe you rolled a fucking natural 20 I know right <laughs> he's discovered a dead body a dead dragon and he is attempting to animate it Oh, um... You see the word Dracolich. Oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> um... Susan, do you happen to know what a Dracolich is? Rolling Arcana? Oh, yeah, but say, I'm rolling Arcana and see if I can figure it out. I would, I would join in that, because <laughs> I'm not reading. 16? If, if you're a proficient in Arcana, you may roll. I am. <laughs> 16. Because not book 17. 17. All right. Let me pull this up for you. The thing this gallery focuses on, on very bizarre. <laughs> I will pull up what you know. My favorite part of D&D, lore and history, and the meaning of words. I love that. Alright. More powerful form of undead, a Dracolich, was a dragon who voluntarily tied its soul to a phylactery freeing itself from death. The type of lich, the creature's spirit, could possess any dead reptilian body, usually their original form, however, and they retained all their powers and abilities of their former body. However, they also gain all the powers of undead. They are usually very powerful spellcasters, and have a ravenous hunger for not only wealth that they did before in life, but also flesh. That, Miyagi, is what a dragon lich is. <laughs> oh, so that seems like fun. Um... Now hear me out, I say we don't bring a giant undead lizard back, and we stop whatever the fuck he's doing. Second off, how are all of you doing? Yay, yeah, hey, I need to show up thumbs here. <laughs> yeah, he's still got his arms crossed and just gives like a limp shrug with his good shoulder, just like... 
great. More Alex crimes against is... nature. <laughs> Alexon is just tense. Hands clenched, jaw clenched. Just tense. I'm gonna lean over to Gabri and be like, I think you should give her a good berry. Has did Alexon eat breakfast or not yet? <laughs> She turns into an emo when she's hungry. <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty reasonable thing. <laughs> Where is Exbit? What's wrong with being emo? Where is Exbit? <laughs> Exbit's right he is right on your shoulder. Okay, cool. I consider you goth, not emo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so are we going to go free prisoners, or...? Gets us out of the city faster, doesn't it? I feel like any answer other than yes is going to be frowned upon, so... Yes, let's go free prisoners for no gold. You can we steal can... whatever the guards have. And that is why I love you, Elkson. Right, whatever you find is... <laughs> So, so I guess a night assault it is then. It seems the best bet. None of us are exactly uh, glancing at the four of us. Built for frontline assault. True. True. Soon as, as soon as she says that, I'm going to disguise self and turn into like a really buff orc. <laughs> Almost looks like Ath, but not Ath. Uh, I'm... I'm strong. <laughs> well, I you just... do look it. Did I just waste a spell slot for that? You I sure absolutely... did. I absolutely did. <laughs> you gotta do it for the bit. Yeah, you gotta do it for the bit. So now that yeah, that's decided... Got... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, well, Miyagi, now you've got me curious, and I need to see who would win between us in an arm wrestling. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what if, if you look at the illusion, his tends to shake a little bit. <laughs> so while we're getting ready to arm wrestle, I'm gonna lean over to Gavri and I'm like, so we're just not gonna talk about that that gauntlet on his hand. Right. I mean. You all seem to have some very impressive and terrifying magic about you. I just figured that was a normal thing. Strength checks. <laughs> or athletics. No. That happened just that within 17. the night? Not something you had prior. What'd you get? What'd you get? 17. I got a 9! <laughs> you are... You're down. You're down. But you're not out yet. Another strength check. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, God. I got a... I got a seven! A yes! And let's just... Changes. Let's just put this out there. You see the illusion is not, like, shit... Like, not showing any sign of, like, fear or anything, but, like, man, he's drenched in sweat. Like... <laughs> Alright, I guess another straight check. We're back to it. Yep. Oh, fuck. 12. I got a 1. I got a natural 1. <laughs> <laughs> Meowgi, your wrist bends unnaturally. You oh. take a point of damage. Oh. From. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm so, so, so. Elkson, so your muscles so pop and you see veins and you're just like. Argh! And Elksa as doesn't make that noise. <laughs> well, Elksa made a similar noise. <laughs> as so oh, continue. As Miyagi, you bend and you feel the, like nothing breaks, but you, you know when you bend the wrong way and you feel like rush of blood. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. And bam, your hand falls onto the floor. You take a point of damage. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to subtle spell disguise self back to myself, but I'm gonna have a broken wrist. 
<laughs> what did you do? <laughs> so now, does the sky self have a saving throw? Uh, let me check. Let me check. <laughs> Because Alexon would get a saving throw, but probably a disadvantage because it's feasible. <laughs> to discern that you are disguised, a creature can use its action to inspect your appearance and must succeed on an intelligence investigation check against your spell save DC. You may do so at disadvantage, Alexon. <laughs> I played it up like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Investigation zero so far. <laughs> yep, yeah, it looks broken. Ah! <laughs> it looks broken. Do you think a good fairy will help him? She just this? starts freaking out. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to slam my hand down on the table, and press the digitation, the sound of of breaking it back in place, like a loud crunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, that feels so much better, and I dropped the disguise self. Oh, 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 oh. oh so I was just staring like that. Do you want to go again? No! Oh, well. So, about that glove on your hand, Miyawaki. Oh, yeah, it's so fancy. I absolutely adore it. What does it do? So, I think my camera stopped. Oh, no. In Sylvan. Oh, no. RDM, it's broken. Oh, RDM, it's broken. Emotional damage. <laughs> Give me one second, I'm going to try to fix this. Damage. Emotional damage is what killed Sazan. And I'm back to Theater of the Mind, and it's still not working. Oh, no. Dramatic pause on whatever Miyagi was going to say. Yep. <gasps> Hanging on the edge of my seat. There we go, I fixed it. Yay. Camera's back on. Yay. So, in Sylvan, Miyagi says, Oh, I have no idea. But it's uh, shiny. His ears do like perk forward, like, oh, this is the moment he realizes there is someone who can hear him shit talking the material plane. Uh, <laughs> he just nods. I wouldn't have the first clue what it would do either, he says in Sylvan. So, boss, should, should I should I gouge out her eyes? Should I gouge out her eyes? She hurt you. I can get her. Does, I can get her. Does he say this out loud? Yes. No, please don't. I'm but she fine. hurt you. I'm fuck fine. Fuck you, Ixbit. Well, fuck you, too. <laughs> yeah, he just starts breaking out laughing. Just hear him say that. <laughs> Do you want to come step into this? You don't want to come. It's a bit fucking annoys her. You don't want to step to this. Oh, please. please tell me he like does the he pats his biceps. Like, now he will curl up his scorpion tail. I I'm in the I'm in the mood for some frog legs, and since there's those frogs here, I might as well have dragonborn legs. <laughs> you have a you have a tail too. The fuck. <laughs> We've all got tails except uses them. We could oh, chop his off. Come at me. Alright, children, calm down. Calm down. Aren't Expit. you the same age as me? Shh, Expit, it's your good boy. He's the boss. He is not the boss. <laughs> Again, I, there seemed to be, like, a lot of pent-up frustration. I do think sparring would really help at some point during the days of travel, if we get the chance. Oxen resists the urge to just side-deck the x -bit. <laughs> She doesn't. She thinks about it for a hot minute, and you can see, like, her hand kind of tense up into a fist for a second. But she doesn't. Okay, so... 
Um, should we like, you go see, downstairs and let them know? You see, as this is going on, as Expert is is um like a, verbally attacking Elkson, you see this once this pseudo dragon fly up on Elkson's shoulder and goes. <laughs> I don't like that thing. You know, pseudo dragons taste like chicken. Do they right. really? We'll find out what a frozen imp popsicle tastes like. Oh, I'll give you a frozen imp popsicle, all right. <laughs> I like <laughs> lean down to Susanna. That like totally goes over <laughs> Elson's <laughs> head. Like what? Uh, free what entertainment, Gavin. That's what's happening. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, you did free me, so. Eh. You get a pass You're this time. Welcome. Yes, free your of demons. Thank you. So oh. that's right, Gavin. You didn't know this. Elkson <laughs> frees any demon she sees. Without we found prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what if I knew what a demon was before meeting Expit over here. So well, you will never meet another one like me. It only happened twice. Oh, only and I twice. This one. Oh no. So just so that we could put this into context, it happened twice, or as I like to think of it, 100% of the time. <laughs> I think that checks out. Suzanne, I need you to do a wisdom saving throw for me. Is this against the magical effect? It is. Good, I have advantage. I know. <laughs> and I never remember to do that. <laughs> I know. Okay. To be fair, they were trapped in a lich's lair. 24. It's better they not be there for the you lich to use their power. Get the feeling of someone trying to pierce the veil and locate you. Is it a not scrying spell? <laughs> it is. Is she within 10 feet of me? Because she is can not. Invisible. That's okay. I detected it anyway. Not today. And I just wave it off. I can do that. <laughs> Looks confused. It's then like, what's not <laughs> today? <laughs> oh, just a little private matter. Nothing, uh, nothing to concern yourself about. I'm very concerned with most of the goings on that you all have. I I am concerned as well. Who's that? Who's that? Dorbus? Dorbus. Dorbus. How long has the door been open? A while. <laughs> Dorbus, we want to do the mission. Alright, um, I got a caravan going out tonight. You guys can hide in that and get out of the city. Alright, that works out. Works out. Is there anything you need from the city before you leave? Any shopping you need to be done for you? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I get a haircut. He tosses you a dagger. That was so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say health potions if you know where to get some. Oh. Elkson just kind of pats her bald head. <laughs> yeah, I can get you a few. Um... How much coin you got? I currently have... I have 68 gold. Mm. It's not going to get too much. Anyone want to chip in? I already owe you. <laughs> Gabri was entered with no money and is <laughs> still yeah. has nothing. Um, if there were something I could do to help out, I would. I mean, I can get him exactly. at cost, and I can get you one healing potion for 50 gold. That'll work. I'll take a healing potion. I have m finance. Alright. You said one healing potion for 50 gold? Yes. I'll take two health potions. Or I can get you a greater healing for that one, for 100. Ooh. That would be greater. And I'd be better than Meowgi, which I always like. Yes, you have a deal. 
Anyone else? I'd rather not be any more in debt to you than I already am, thanks. Fair enough. Gibby will come back with you. He takes the gold from you. Anything else you need before I get out? Give him a mirror. There's one in your room. Okay. I'm gonna go fix this. And I head up to my room. You should. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional damage. I, I got a paper bag for you if you like. Episode. That's it. Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I think as Estezen's going, can I like grab? I don't. I don't think Gabri has a lot of them. But, like one of. I don't know what the fantasy equivalent of a hair scrunchie is, but I know he has some of them. Like just strips. Twine. Of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just try and discreetly offer one of those to Suzanne for all the good it'll help if she can like style her hair in such a way that it like flops over the parts she wants to hide. <laughs> um, I'm able to style it. I had to cut it so it's a little bit shorter. Okay. Than it was before. I will you not make you do a roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, short time passes as you see Gibby comes up. You know, a small child. Hi! Uh, I got your potions for you. Um, we have one greater and one regular healing. Who gets the greater? Over here. Okay. And the regular? I'll take that one, please. There you go. And as a tip, I will give him two. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, are you all ready? Uh, are we? As best I think we can be. All right, I, I'm gonna get you all into the caravan. You're gonna be inside, um, underneath the cover, so you guys gotta lay down and be very, very quiet. I suggest going to the bathroom now. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Gibby will lead you through outside the tavern. Uh, you're going through different alleyways. Um, underneath um, some broken boards in this large warehouse, um, he leads you. As there's a bunch of wagons inside, um, not too much in dust. Hey. Before we get there, Alexon would ask what kind of caravan it is, like who is on it and what's it for. Uh, it's basically some. Um, some silk and some turquoise that's being headed out. Mm. Silk and turquoise. Mm -hmm. Is it like nobles or is it just like tradesmen? Just tradesmen. It's actually, it's tradesmen, but it's not really tradesmen. It's kind of our stuff that we just transport back and forth as a way to travel. So oh. it's actually run by us. Quite then smart. Why do we need to sneak on? Because you're still known in the by the guards as gladiators who escaped. He does have a point. Searched. So, and we, you know, we do bribe to get away from the physical searches and all that. So, but if you're seen getting into it, no amount, of, no amount of bribe would actually work. You know, as. As we walk, or as we're walking, Miyagi would telepathically tell Ixbit to watch behind us and make sure that we're not being followed. You got it, boss. Once um, we get there, uh, like where we can kind of see where we're supposed to go, Alexon will do pass without a trace. Very good. Um, I would like Ixbit to roll a perception check. Ixbit, uh, my buddy. On the sheet. Right, I'm just gonna do it. Perception. I'm just gonna... 
That's a six. Okay. Good to know. You guys get into the caravan. You're covered up by tarps. You have a, a nice sitting area uh, inside the wagon. Uh, nothing. And it's a little cramped, but it's not. You have some some freedom of movement. You have some stretching room. Yeah, Reese just plopped on the floor unhappily. <laughs> <laughs> Both for balance reasons and room reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the Zen's gonna look through the silk and see if any of it looks good on her. There is a nice, like a pink to purple transition going on on a sash of silk. It's like a bolt of silk. Like in the right light, it looks pink, but in the you change your vision a little bit, it looks like a light purple. The so Zen will just, with no shame, just remove her top. And then wrap the silk around her and make kind of like a, what do you call those? Like, like, um, like a not toga. a sarong, but like, yeah, like a toga type deal. Okay. <laughs> I don't wear armor, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you guys start traveling. A few hours go by and the sounds of the city escape you. They... All the busyness, all the, all of the, I'm sorry, I've got sounds going on in my background that is taking my attention away. And we're going to take one quick break so I can fix this in my background and then we can continue on. Okay. Yay. Woo. Yay.
and welcome back. Uh, our characters have shuffled away inside of a caravan. You guys have a little bit of nervousness as the wagon is stopped out by the city gates. You hear some muffled conversations about inspections, and then the wagon starts to move along. Soon, the busyness of the city, the noises the um, of regular commerce, the moving of crates, the people talking, all drift away, and you hear, All right, we're clear. You all can come out now if you'd like. Is the wagon still in motion, or are we stopped somewhere? Wagon is still in motion. Okay. We'll immediately toss the tarp off. <laughs> Not stand up yet, because, you know, balance, but just, like, take a good breath of, of good old stale wagon air. Oh, it's so good to breathe fresh air. Oh my gosh, it's so cramped. And outside, it is nice and sunny. There's a light, cool breeze going across. It is a pleasant day. Alexin is playing with her pseudo dragon. Go and roll an animal handling check for me. Seeing that happens, knowing Ixbit, I'm just going to tell Ixbit no. Before he does anything, I'm just going to be like, no. Don't but, even but, bother. Don't. Oh, no fun. I kind of sneak up behind Miyagi and start just like comparing like pieces of silk fabric against his fur. And I'm like, this is way better than that black drape you're wearing. Ooh, this one's nice too. Have you considered green, Miyagi? 13 plus 5, so 18. It is, um, the pseudo dragon is definitely <laughs> starting to form a telepathic bond with you. You can, it can relay emotions. Mm -hmm. And you have taught it um, stay and hide. <laughs> Alexin is kind of oblivious to the rest, just focusing on the joy of playing with an animal. And then you, you feel like a little anxious feeling from it. And then... You see it like dart or dart and look somewhere off in the distance, seems like uh, outside. And it looks back to you with a, and you feel it's like asking for permission. Uh, go ahead. It flies up and you see it goes up high, then goes into a dive shortly after. You see it come back with its quarry, a small prairie dog. Uh, do I know if this is a male or female before I give this thing a name? Um, roll a dice. Even female, odd, male. Two. Even female. Okay. And it's what color? It's a crimson one? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Good girl, Ruby. <gasps> Ruby. It roars at its name. You don't like it? You feel a warmth feeling. Telepathically. Hmm. As an acceptance. I just wanted, I didn't want to just call you Pseudo Dragon, so. It lays the prairie dog down, flies up to your shoulder, and kind of wraps around your neck. I'll nuzzle it a little. Or just being a pain in the ass. I think, like, when there's a quiet moment and not wanting to interrupt, Gabriel, like, quietly speak up in that awkward, I'm addressing everyone, but I don't know how to, and making eye contact is even more awkward way. Just be like, 
So now that we're, you know, chasing around lunatic mages who do these horrific experiments, um, bit of a, a small request if it's if it's not too big. Well, yes. if it's a small request, then clearly it's not too big. Right, you've got me there. Very good. Um, <laughs> and there's like a pause again, because he's also like kept his eyes on how how well can we see outside the wagon. Uh, without the tarp covering you, it's an open wagon. And now that oh. you look around, do you see that they actually are carting extra horses as well? One of them oh. being Thunderbolt. It's Thunderbolt burned with jealousy that Elkson is spending so much time with Ruby. Ah! <laughs> it might cut out with the high-pitchedness of my screen that you guys did not get to hear. <laughs> right, well, if it comes to it, uh, and I do happen to fall in whatever horrific battles come, I do need you to obliterate my remains. Just nothing left. Very appreciated. Just putting that That's out there. That's an oddly specific request. It is, and I would greatly appreciate it. If it came to that, I mean, rather not, but, you know, seeing do, how things have gone. Do we do we get to know why? I mean, it's fairly obvious. I'd rather not have any more of my parts being used for who knows what. That one any... seemed fairly interested in dragon sort, but it wouldn't surprise me that more of these messed up people would be interested in worse. Say... Did you... Until, like, <laughs> look to Elkson as she... Did you, you, did you just say any more of your parts? Well, shrug. <laughs> not say anything, not meet your eyes. And he's pointing at the scar on his chest right now. It was a pretty, pretty large scar. What did you start to say, uh, Miyagi? And Sylvan, Miyagi will say, I will make sure that it is properly and thoroughly disposed of. And again, quietly in Sylvan, um... He'll respond, good, because I've seen what horrific magic you can both do, so I'm counting on it. Out loud and common, I will say, oh, I can blow up a ship, so I'll get rid of it, no problem. <laughs> I'm that powerful. As a jab to... Sister. Orphan ships. <laughs> can I do a stealth or sleight of hand? I want to make it look like I'm suddenly interested in my magic book. But I'm going to be slowly over the next 10 minutes casting Detect Magic on Gavry. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, sleight of hand. Okay. Uh, does that just go against our passive? Because Gavry's not actively yep. looking. Uh, 17. So... What is your passive, Gavry? Uh, let's have, have a look. Pull up my thingy. I'm going to see it faster on. Yeah, uh, 16. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what did what did uh, you roll? I rolled a 17. Oh, so then, then no, I don't, I don't see. <laughs> I don't see. But, so, Gavry, you know about my having freed demons, him being bound to a demon, and her being hunted. I think it's fair we know at least a little bit about you at this point. I mean, we... And he specifically says to Alexon, like, we we talked about when I first got to that forsaken city. Um, I was hunting these folk. And in his hands, he'll, like, cup it so the glare of the sun doesn't obstruct it. Uh, and if you're... Are you still... Your ritual casting your detect magic, right? Yes. Okay, then, I mean, it's gonna show up anyway. Um, in his hands, he does a minor illusion um, of this symbol. 
and it's of a skull with like <laughs> writhing worms. It's an emblem. I don't know if any of the party recognize this DM, do they? Um That is gonna be up to their char- their players. Could I, I don't know what it pertains to, so I have no clue if Alex and would or not. Do you want to drop like the the art maybe in one of the channels so they can? Uh, if you could, because if I change my. Uh... Oh yeah 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 yeah. Let could me go I digging for it. Do a religion check. Um. Or what sort of check would it be? Well, I want you to look at that and then think about the books that you've read. Casual wormy boy books, maybe? Oh, wormy boy books. Well, I do have a wormy boy book, so like that's why I'm like... I don't want to ping everyone, but it's uh, it's in the Discord there. Mm. Oh, that's the symbol. And it is an identical representation. It's very clear, uh, this illusion that he holds in hand. It doesn't move. It's a frozen image, but... These are who I'm after. You say you're being hunted. I'm hunting these ones down. Because imagine the sort of things you saw there for Dragonborn. These folk did something similar to my folk. And I'd like to see them not do it to anyone else, honestly. That's all. Fair enough. I mean, you've been helping me with Yosan. So... I think it's only fair that I help you with that. It seems this sort of plague is absolutely everywhere in this realm. It's honestly terrifying that this is common as far as I've seen. My home was nothing like any of this. We didn't even have to deal with currency much because we just did tasks and got what we needed within our own community. Oh, same. It's very foreign to me, honestly, that you say these numbers of gold like they mean anything. But favors in that city are not there a lot. And I imagine, like, I don't know how soon it would take for uh, it to go off, uh, Joey, but... Oh, it's about ten minutes, so yeah, yeah. I have no concept of time whatsoever. <laughs> it would be going off about now. Like how long the conversation takes? Yeah, I get it. Um, and remind me, it just tells you the type of magic. Good question. Give me one sec. It's been a while uh, for since the duration. I, actually used... <laughs> I know. I usually just let Brian give me answers. Uh, for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within thirty feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you could use your action. To see a faint aura around a visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn the school of magic, if any. Uh, cool. Um, I don't know what magic it is, but I think based on the number of them in his pack, the only magic thing he has are his good berries. That's it. Oh. No necromancy at all. Oops. I don't, DM. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. There is a small trace of necromancy on Gavry's chest. I slam the book and I'm like, all right then, found what I was looking for. What are we talking about? I'm like, now that everyone's had a good look at this image, she'll make it disappear and just be like, not a whole lot. Even if they don't help you, I will, Gabri. Um, We're taking on another pro bono mission. Are we ever going to get paid? It's Gavri. He literally just got you up in a battle. This is how it's going to work all the time. Every time I ask for gold, somebody's going to remind me of all of the precious things my friends have done for me. I'm going to die poor and hungry. 
Like, he starts to laugh at that, but again, stops himself, because it looks uncomfortable, but he looks very amused at that. I was like, yeah, favors are right, bitch, ain't they? And speaking of favors, we have come to our place of parting. The caravan driver says. You want to go down this path? And in about two days, you'll run right into the prison. Two days? We gotta walk for two Joy. days. We brought you extra horses. Oh. Gavry scoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Alexin is immediately at Thunderbolt's side. <laughs> uh, actually, Ruby has already landed on Thunderbolt. Oh, they like each other. Yay! <laughs> Would my ability to speak with small animals work on a horse? Yeah, a small no animal. Notably small animal, the horse. <laughs> no. <laughs> what about my pseudo-dragon? Uh, the pseudo-dragon is actually not an animal. It's not a beast. Okay. Alright. I just pick the first horse I see. Gavri, well, did we get the name of our wagon driver? No, or you did not. Just, uh, Gavri will thank them. Um, and there's definitely points where he's looking off, like now that he's outside the city and could just go. There are times where he's looking off, but then just to clarify, he'll ask for very specific directions to the prison. You've got one path to follow. Um, he'll give you some slight directions where you're going to be traveling in a in a forest. There are some rocky area ahead. Um, but as far as he knows, it's pretty clear. You have a spare looking glass. Can't say I do. Then looks at him just like that. Like, hmm. Well, best of luck. Have fun storming the prison. So it has already started to just trot off on Thunderbolt in the <laughs> direction we're supposed to go. You know, for an underground resistance that wants to liberate its people, it sure does not have a lot of supplies. Oh. Uh, we, we lost the Josh. Josh. Oh, no. And Meowgi fainted off his horse. <laughs> uh, Meowgi. He's too busy swooning over his glove. <laughs> he was just like, oh, look, shiny. <laughs> Whacked himself in the face. Can you imagine Gabriel's <laughs> <situation? laughs> with the tail and has to make saving throws? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys start traveling. Oh, Let me plug this in. That way I can hear you. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. Sorry, Discord's been a butt for like the last five minutes. <gasps> and so we all were robots. <laughs> oh, no. no worries. That's we why just I wasn't decided how was Yogi like, died. I, I couldn't. Oh no, he's gone. Oh, no! He froze. Get away from the tail of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> there right. we go. You're being a butt. I imagine Gavri has no issues keeping pace with a horse. <laughs> no, no issues. And like, there are times where I don't know. What, oh, there he goes again. Um, what time of day is it when we're like actually out? This is probably going to be a closer to late afternoon. Okay. okay. I think there are times where like he's definitely he looks happier to be out, but like it's that same cycle of like for any uptick in energy, he's just immediately exhausted afterwards. <laughs> Gavri, yeah, just so I can make an, a side note, um, what's your size? Are you uh, medium or small or large? Medium. Okay. But like barely. He's five feet. Just a tiny man. Gotcha. Oh wait, so Miyagi's taller than you? Yeah, by a lot. <laughs> no, just, just like if you're five foot, then Meowgi's like a foot bigger than you. But oh, we have this lot. towering elks and that's yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very fun <laughs> visual every time. 
So, you guys start traveling on. The first day passes without incident. As the sun starts to set. Thinking about whether you want to press forward or set up camp. Maybe we could uh, go to sleep, make a camp. Hi. What time of day is it? It's night. Divine Hi. Twitch Vention. Wow. Oh, dear. Okay. I know exactly what I'm going to do for this oh. one. That was a while ago. Oh, dear. Okay, well, fine. You got to let me know that. <laughs> So, camp? No camp? Push on? What are we doing? We camp. No point in arriving at the prison tired. Alright, so... Me, says Gavry while he's invisible in the dark. Alright. So where are you setting up camp at? One mile off the road. Alright, you travel approximately that's, one mile off the... <laughs> that's way too far. <laughs> I'd, say, <laughs> I'd say maybe about... Enough off the road to where. Well, I don't know. Are we like? Is it like woods or like a desert? Like what's the it, thing it's, look like? It, it, in this place, it's mainly grasslands, but there is a scatter. It's like a light forest. It's not heavily dense. There are a couple trees here and there. Um, like you can. There's probably a tree every twenty or so feet, fifteen to twenty feet. So I'd say maybe forty feet in this way we have at least a couple of trees between us and the road and right and there is some it's uh, there are some hills um, yeah if we can find like the opposite side of a hill that's close enough to okay. the road where we have the better advantage there yeah you can definitely find something like that all right you guys start to set up camp who would like to do the watches I'll do the first one I'll okay. yeah, have a hard time sleeping second. for a while. I'll do the second, but before we go to bed, I'm going to summon Avalon mm -hmm. and have him do some reconnaissance over the prison. Um, well, the prison is the prison is a good still a day and a half away. Yeah. Well, my bird flies fast. It's, it's an <laughs> okay, the bird goes. Flies. Okay, good. And I'm going <laughs> to sit there and meditate while they're setting up camp. <laughs> okay. When you get close to the prison, you can call Avalon back and <laughs> All right, for the first watch, roll perception. Seven plus two, thirteen. Okay. My dear, it seems that you are falling on hard times. How can I help you, as you have helped me regain my freedom? I'm just kind of glances around. Where is this coming from? Your head. Oh my gosh, is this the demon hell that you freed? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yo. I um, who are you? Oh, that's right. We never exchanged names. You may call me Leandra. That sounds like a demon. Shut well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Oxen? That's a pretty name. I'm what? Oxen. I know, Oxen. You freed me. Um, I was that lich's. I was that lich's plaything. Oh, oh, the lady. Yes, and I see that you are conflicted. The, that's an understatement. Would you like to talk about it? I mean. I, I don't really see why talking about any of it really helps. Well, 
I see that you're in pain, and I don't like that. I'm scared of myself. Why on earth would you be scared of yourself? You seem to have been growing quite powerful. Well, I came across someone who caused a great deal of harm to my mother and killed my father and was excited at the prospect of killing him. Well, did this person do evil? Yeah, a lot. Did this person hurt people that you care about? Yes. So it would be right to stop this person from hurting other people, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, it's either right or it's not. Yeah. So why is it bad that you would feel happy at stopping it? I don't know. It's just, you know, I was always taught that hurting people is wrong. Well, sometimes people deserve to get hurt, I guess. I mean... That's if you don't hurt him, would he hurt others? Yes, he probably is right now. Well, I think you did the right thing then. Thank you. Anytime, my dear. If you need anything, you can just ask. I owe you, you like my life. In my <laughs> are you like in my head or something, or are you just nearby? I am close enough, but I am right not right next to you. I have some skill with the arcane. Well, considerable more skill than your traveling companions, but you know, apprentices can be apprentices. Automatically, they just automatically assume that you're bad and that I did the bad thing for you because you're a demon. Ah, labels, labels, labels. Why must we have these labels? I am not a perfect angel. I will no make sh sure that you know that. I go and I have my fun. But... That was not a nice place I was at. And you stop and you stop me from hurting. That is a good act in my eyes. I'm such a hypocrite. But do you know how I can be strong enough to keep him from getting away again? I can help you with that. <laughs> Don't make that face, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but if I do help you with that, Well, I would be giving up something for myself. But if you wish it... What would you have to give up? A bit of my power. Nothing so dramatic. But a bit. Tell me, is this important to you? Yes. If you wish to enter a pack with me, I would be happy to aid you. She stops and thinks for a moment. She'll look over to 
Miyagi. This is then. The Gavri. Gavri's invisible. <laughs> wherever <laughs> she, they, they, wherever she last saw Gavri. <laughs> I... I want to stop him. Pause on you. <laughs> <laughs> I love this group. Oh. Everyone had demon packed. Yo! Yeah! Rock <laughs> of the Fiend. Huh. Oh, Warlock of the Fiend. <laughs> Meowgi! Oh, here we go. Is it Grandpa? <laughs> you travel a dangerous path. Why do you travel this path? I gifted you all I could. And you let them take everything from me. Can I respond? Can you? I am so sick. Who even are you? <laughs> If you get that reference, I love you. <laughs> Who am I? And of course you would ask me that as I can't get into Foundry right now. Because <laughs> I have the name in Foundry. Kristan <gasps> Thelion or something like that? The Silver Dragon, yes. Yep. I am... I was... Kristan Thelion... I am the shadowy death. Gazunite? <laughs> Hush. Fairly certain my furniture's floating now. <laughs> oh, Meg, we don't summon another one. I am. I will drain your bloodline. I will. What about my bloodline makes me so special? I have you, and then I have apparently my great grandpappy. As don't you I feel claws rake across your face. Cool. <laughs> cool. Ouch. Pause on Miyagi. Sazen. Well then, shall we take another sparring lesson? You know, after the day I've had, I don't I don't think I looked forward to anything more. Show me what you can do. I've learned Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> My crane style will defeat your scorpion style. Fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and you and Raylan go off on your sparring session. You see that he is keeping pace with you, but he is definitely, definitely outclassing you. But he's not trying to defeat you. He's trying to push you and push you. He will make comments on a great parry um, he, or a good dodge. He will slap you with the flat of your his blades when you mess up. But definitely not taking damage, definitely more of a mentor type. You see, you must use your height. Many people will say your height is a disadvantage, but it is actually an advantage. People, you you are a smaller target. You are harder to hit. Use that to your advantage. And then you're going to start using you use a bit of your Eldritch knowledge. And he'll look at you. Beware of that. I know part of his essence is in the blade as well. That creature 
destroyed a lot of people. That creature? Yes. Mockloth. Mockloth. I shall. Do I know, based on like just history and anything, if I know what Mockloth is? And you may roll an Arcana check. Went from a 19 to a 3, so that's going to be an 11. Let me make sure I have the right uh, saying as well. Hold on. Because again, all of this right now, this is all improv. Was not planning that, any of this. Ah, nice. And my computer's just being a little bit slow. Here it is. More cough. Morkoth. The Morkoth that slew me and I slew him is an aberration. It killed many people. And that blade, as much as I am a part of that blade, it is a part of it as well. I have deemed my time has passed. I've come to accept that. I don't think it will accept it. Are you trapped in the blade? My soul is. And if I were so inclined, is there a way to Free your soul from the blade. Not that I know of, but I would not do that. Because he is trapped in here as well. To free one, may free the other. Well, that's quite the burden to bear. I've shouldered many a burden in my time. I should introduce you sometime to a colleague of mine named Elkson. Perhaps you could teach her not to free demons. Yeah. <laughs> I should introduce you to a colleague of mine. I believe he is still alive, even though he was only a human. But an extremely powerful mage. Name of De Elric. De Elric? Yes. If anyone would know how to free me. It may be him. He you have, no. did travel between planes a lot and believe he has found a way to not suffer the effects of aging without falling into the undead. A bit of a recluse, though. Maybe well, a... Maybe after you've learned a bit more, I will tell you his last location that I knew of. Well then, shall we get back to it? And I'm going to, before he answers, I'm going to lunge. He will let you get close, and then he'll just... <laughs> hmm. You telegraph. And it is mentally exhausting, but then you find a peaceful slumber until the darkness comes I am not so evil I only wish for you to gain all that you deserve well as big as a fan of I am of getting all that I deserve I do have to err on the side of caution. I do have a couple of colleagues that seem to be going down dark paths, and it's kind of out of vogue at this point. Then be the light in the darkness. <sighs> Rather odd thing for the dark portion of the sword to say. I do not like the dark. I prefer the light. Not everything is so 
arbitrary. Interesting. And pause on Suzanne. Meowgi. You wake up and your face has massive claw marks on it. In fact, pause on that real quick. Suzanne. Or I'm mm-hmm. sorry, not Suzanne. Alkson. Mm-hmm. Do you accept the pack? I do. Okay. <laughs> this means, Yogi, you gotta get two demon packs. Yeah! You can't let her one up you. Get all the demons. So. One up thing. <laughs> let me show you what I can teach you. I will come to you in your dream. I believe your friend has just woken up, and he seems injured. I'll see you soon. I'll run over to Miyagi at that point. And you see Miyagi's face is bleeding as he has massive claw marks on his face. Cure wounds immediately. (sighs) He is seething, all right? He is mad. Uh, Healing word. I don't have cure wounds right now. Okay. I also need Miyagi to do a will wisdom saving throw. Okay. Gabri still- goes through his morning ritual of struggling to stand up. No, it's not morning yet. It's still uh, in the oh evening. My God, my God. That's a 10 total. <laughs> okay. Now, can Elkson see invisible things? Um, I, I have really good dark vision, but I don't think I can see invisibility. Where would okay. that be under? A uh, Gloomstalker thing, I believe. Ren, do you know what level your see invisible things is? It's just anything that's invisible. It's not a spell. Well, no, like, what, at what level you got that ability? Uh, I think two from Ranger, because it's blind sight. Oh, then. Yeah, I picked blind fighting. Oh, for your fighting stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not really yeah, seeing, it's no. more of sensing something's there. Right, right. Yeah, okay. I have umbral sight. I don't have blind sight. Okay. What the hell happened? I need a minute. And Miyagi's going to cross his legs. Like, he's sitting up, cross his legs. And just, he's, before he does that, he's going to pull out the book, the Draco Nobilis, flip to the page with Crestelithilium, whatever whatever her name is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Elton is just kneeling beside him. And... And think, going to the passage, which I do do have loaded up. How are you going to steer people towards righteousness and then hurt them? What are, what is your deal? Because I'm fucking over it. I don't know if he... At this point, he's just thinking to himself, like, he knows that there's something there. And he wants to make contact. First off, he wants to bitch them out for cutting him. And second off, get get a fucking idea of what their deal is. And it's at this moment that as soon as you said that, you just hear a twit. A what? A twit. And you're like, what the hell is that? And then you feel a piercing pain in your chest. As you look down, there's an arrow sticking out of you. Oh, dear. And that's where we're going to stop for tonight. (laughs) Oh, dang. How'd that get there? (laughs) 
Has oh, look, I've been has... impaled. <laughs> no, that doesn't make a pact with an arrow. So, we're going to end our session how we end all of our sessions here, with bitches, gripes, complaints, comments, questions answered. We're going to start with the impaley. Meowgi. Oh. Okay, first off, wonderful session. I loved every bit of it. I'm glad I got my item. Um, what the fuck is up with this dragon? Because on one hand, on one hand, it's like, oh, you were mine. Like, I loved you. Why did you turn me away? Well, like, I don't fucking know you. Are you grandma? And then there's grandpa? Like, what the fuck? You're about to find out. Oh, I want to find out. Uh, because guess who just found you? No! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> yep. So that Fuck. one of them's an, an archer, so we're going to go yep. into a party versus party combat. Alright, All right, next perfect. we will have Ren. Hi, Gabri's having another splendid day what's turning into a beautiful night uh one of these days i'm as a player going to remember just how many attacks he has per turn especially that first round of combat yeah if you get an extra one right he gets so many extra attacks on that first turn um but i had i had fun uh learning learn a little more everyone's getting demons i'm excited (laughs) next jane demand um, so I'm really enjoying this race to see who becomes our BBEG first, Elksin or Meowgi. <laughs> <laughs> it is really fun. Um, I, I really enjoyed the session. Uh, combat was fun. I like how we all died except for Gavry. Uh, <laughs> and Elksin. Don't worry, when Gavry... I, I didn't time. When Gavry dies, it's going to be dead, so... Right. Oh. There's going to be no death saves. It's going to be, like, 100 damage overkill. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Disintegrate, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's but having a great time. Very good. And last but not least, the person I corrupted today. <laughs> Damien the DM. I mean I wasn't planning on this, <laughs> but I it's it's what she would do at this point. Like I <laughs> She's afraid of herself. Her friends are already making packs, so it can't be that bad, right? And, like and she was have a talk with you. <laughs> and she was made. She was making good sense, wasn't she? She was. Yeah, you know, that's that's how the dark side gets you. They make sense. Uh, and now it's in his naive as hell. So. So. That should be fun. This was so much fun, though. Oh my god, this session was a blast. So for our next session, we will be jumping into combat again. This time, though, you don't get to plan. <laughs> you don't see what you're going up against. And Sazen and Gavry are still sleeping. But Gavry is invisible. No one can see Gavry. <laughs> You, you see, no so one can see. No hazard. one can see you if they use dark vision. If it's regular light, they can see you. Yeah, but if they have regular light, then uh, have they got torches? They're gonna throw torches at us. You will see. So please join us again in two weeks' time for the next installment of Divine Heresy. And I will promise you that the name is very much so a big part of the story. I mean, we've all got demons. I don't have a demon. I have a ghost patron. (laughs) Wait, so is Gavry's the only one who doesn't have a voice yet who's like, hey, you want to do some murder, kid? (laughs) I have two of them, so I think I win. I've got two of them. You're right, you're right. So we are going to raid real quick, and hopefully I've done this correctly. Uh, so please join us in two weeks' time at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our next installment. And thank you, everybody. Thanks for the raids. Uh, thank uh, Foundry for our um, the virtual tabletop that we use. Uh, James RPG Art for 
the side scenes that I use for the break and all that, uh, as well as JB2A uh, smile animations. If you saw, saw that on Foundry, that's uh, what I use for that. It's the paid version. It is very fun when it works. So hope everybody has a good night. Now we got to raid, 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 raid. And everyone's everyone's making packs. I love We this. have raided. I don't want to hear Once Elton again. me out you shit at all. Ever again. again. I have That's not made it. a pact. I am working with a good spirit. <laughs> that, you, you've got voices in your head now, too. But... Uh, I wonder if Neogin's going to notice moments, that Elgin they will look is up and no longer going your presence. to be chastising him. Uh, they were also having Probably not. Not like that Nightfall just raided us with a party so, of six. So, so, so let me hey, ask you this. The, are you the taking raid, a raid level, level in Warlock? Or thanks. are you yeah, like, thanks for the raid, taking guys. like Eldritch Adapter or Magic? You're now Probably a full yeah. level. See, I thought about taking a full level. But then I was like, hmm. I not to intrude. No. I don't, like, look at what I can and can't get with levels, and just story-wise, she's making a pact silent. with a fucking succubus. As I don't think that's just gonna be look. a little toe-in. Ah, uh, you- oh, I love this. I love this. You bonded with one, I bonded with the other. We're two for so, two right now. So, basically, what's gonna happen is Alexon did get a level with that. However, the next level up, they will- Alexon will not level up. Um, to keep everybody on track. Me. So, um, and it's going only one level dip, and it's going to be the pack of the fiend. Yep, I already put it. Um, so, and seeing as Alexon did level up, then you guys will be leveling up here a lot quicker than what I thought, just because I like to keep everybody on the same power level. Sorry, um, I threw off your I rhythm. I like to think that, like, Gabri's blanket of sadness is keeping these demons and voices at bay. They just can't get to him. He's so gloomy. <laughs> well, the thing, again, I like to keep everybody the same level. I don't like one person getting way more powerful, but we're going to have to deal with the level um, disparity just for now, um, for the next session or two. But everybody will be getting another level up, and just Alkson won't be leveling up at that time. Um, I, I do have a question. Go for it. That's local. Is is the dragon trying to like be a patron, or what is what is <laughs> up with that? Be because okay, I can so, tell you. I can tell you, but it will ruin the reveal. But I can tell you. Uh, okay, don't then don't tell me. I, okay, it's just, I, there, there I'm is so a lost. yes. The, you're supposed to be lost right now because you have. It's you are about to find out a lot, and I know that Good. normally I do a chapter on each person, and everybody's had a little bit in this chapter. I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm just going to have a whole lot of reveal in this chapter instead of having it all Elkson, even though this is Elkson's arc. Um, you're going to have a little bit of you know I did a little bit of Sazen. Now I'm going to do a little bit of Miyagi, and then you're going to have to. Again, combat might not be the way to go about this next thing. Okay? Yeah, I'll, it's I'll, not... tell you right, I'll tell you right now, even as Miyagi, he doesn't want to fight. He wants answers. Like, so Who do you think's attacking you right now? I think it's the Dragonborn. You're I right. I think it's the Dragonborn. You're absolutely right. And you guys, again, you might not have to combat it. You might have to combat it. It all depends on some roles and some... You know, not just roles, but what you actually say. And let me actually 